hundreds of thousands of gasifier buses and other vehicles rode the roads of Europe during the golden age of gasifiers. There were also gasifier tractors in the fields and gasifier cars and motorcycles in the cities of France, Sweden, and other countries. The USSR had no firewood-powered cars due to the lack of gasifier vehicles as such. The first M1 Peltzer cars with gasifiers on board were on the verge of mass production at the Gorky Automobile Plant. They could even run on peat briquettes at a cost of a few pence, but the war broke out. Open sources of those years explicitly stated that a firewood-powered truck saved only half the gasoline cost. So, it was entirely economically unfeasible to install gasifiers on cars. Let alone motorcycles. Gasifier trucks operated where there were no roads and where food is delivered by helicopters even today. By the government order, only gasifier transport operated at distant logging bases. It turned out that 4.4 kilograms of wood chips cost the same as one liter of gasoline back then. How much has that figure changed in a hundred years? Write in the comments. While you are writing comments, I will begin to tell you about Soviet firewood-powered motorcycles. The Soviet Union began to make its first woodchip-powered motorcycle in 1931 but it was not accomplished. Also, the State Automotive Research Institute started to design the first gasifier motorcycle prototype a few years before the world was two, but this work was not continued. All of these motorcycles had four-stroke engines because engineers believed that two-stroke engines could not run on generator gas. Gasoline should be mixed with oil in two-stroke engines, so oil supply should be designed to transfer such kinds of engines to gas. Back then, most Soviet motorcycles, L300 Red October, IZH-7 and IZH-8, were equipped with two-stroke engines. Radzikovsky, a motorcycle athlete from Simferopol, designed a charcoal gasifier for his L300 motorcycle equipped with a two-stroke engine. He named it VR2. The gasifier could also be installed on IZH-7 and IZH-8 motorcycles, widespread at that time. The figure shows the gasifier design. It consisted of the transverse charcoal gasifier, 1, the cooler, 2, and the filter with oil-soaked iron shavings, 3. The gasifier itself was 220 mm in diameter and 550 mm high. Its upper part was made of 1 mm steel and the lower one of 2.5 mm steel. Nozzle 9 was welded in 120 mm from the bottom. The tuyere was lathe from a piece of refractory brick for lining cupolas and thermal furnaces. The gas outlet 10 was welded opposite to the lance, 50 mm from the bottom. The gas went out of it into cooler 2, made of a thin-walled tube 45 mm in diameter and 415 mm long, placed across the vehicle frame. Oil dripped into the engine during operation on gas due to exhaustion. In February-March 1941, the motorcycle was under testing by the experimental and technical sector of the USSR Central Automobile and Motorcycle Club. The gasifier held a total of 5 kilograms of charcoal. 180 grams of pine charcoal takes up a volume of 1 liter. Another gasifier motorcycle design I managed to find was Rubin's patent filed half a year after the above-mentioned tests in December 1941. The inventor does not explicitly say what type of gasifier it is, but indirect signs let me determine that it was wood-powered. In his patent, he points out that the main problem with motorcycle gasifiers is their small hopper size and poor fuel sludge. The inventor offered to place the gasifier over the rear wheel and push the fuel with a spring apparently placed in the lid. I have not found any more works on gas generator motorcycles in our technical history. See you soon.